Hi, I'm Percy Berry. Um, I'm 46 years old. I was diagnosed with diabetes at the age of five. Um, the reason for this interview is um, last year, April 5th, 2018, I had a kidney transplant due to diabetes. And the doctor told me I had excess protein in my kidney and I asked him, okay, what's the next step? He said to change my diet, stay away from sodium, stay away from Coke and Pepsi um, because of the phosphate in the foods. So that was fine, doing all that. Um, then slowly, slowly down the road, I, have, I kept having to go and get blood work done and they said, no, your GFR, that's your kidney function, was at like 10% like working. So they said, I think it's time for dialysis. I, I had to go to the hospital and get a central line put in. And then we started dialysis after that. And I was on dialysis for, I think, three and a half years. And then a good friend of ours went and got, um, she was gonna donate blood and had no idea what her blood type was, found that her blood type. She phoned another friend, a friend phoned my wife, Lori, and said, what's Darcy's blood type? They said, oh, negative. So she phoned us back and said, um, giving Darcy a kidney, and there was no turning back. She wanted to do it, she wanted to do it that day. So we gave her some names and numbers to call to get tested up, because there is a very, very lot of tests, because everything, like the donor and the recipient have to be a perfectly healthy, and they have to be a perfect match, like blood and everything. So. Getting worked up on the transplant list is a there's a lot of a lot of work to it and same with Phyllis. My my donor's name was Phyllis Weeks. She's in she lives in Hunter River. And so after that they uh I got test done, she got test done, and then they gave us a date. So we went to Halifax and they they took her first, they took her about seven thirty in the morning. Got got her uh, kidney out and they they said everything's fine and kidney's out it's in the freezer sounds funny but that's the way they do it so then they called me in to the OR about four o'clock and the next day I was had a new kidney and I felt great and I was up walking around and but there's a there's a lot um, a lot you're a lot that your kidneys do that people don't realize, like it affects your blood pressure, it affects the fluid in your body, and it gets rid of the toxins in your body. So when your kidneys are failing, your body's getting filled up with, with toxins that will affect other organs, and then you sadly pass away. So when you're on dialysis, you have two options. You get a kidney and you move on, or you pass away. There's there's no other, you can be on dialysis for many years, but it's not really helping, it's just kind of keeping you going for a little bit, but yeah, the more toxins in your body, then it sort of taxing other organs. Um, so, as you had that kidney transplant, how, how different is your life now, do you? do everything about the same or? No, I, we asked the, the doctor, we said like, so what happens now, do I, am I still on a renal diet? Can I do this, can I do that? And he said, no, you're, you're back to where you were. You can, because when I was a diabetic, I was trying to eat, it, eat as healthy as I could, like whole wheat bread and tomatoes and, and uh, greens and lettuce and salads and all the stuff. But when you're on um, dialysis, you can't eat that stuff because there's, phosphate in the food that the kidney can't get rid of. And the only way I could, I can do that is I had to have 12 Tums a day. So when I eat the Tums, the phos phosphate in the foods, like potatoes and the breads and stuff, would stick to the calcium in the Tums, and then I could get rid of them. But if not, I'd have an overload of um, phosphate 
in my body and that's what um so you what was your work like before all this happened i was a <clears throat> custodian um i was working at the mount Stewart consolidated school and it was just normal and then they said when i have an on dialysis a typical day for me on dialysis i'd wake up at 4 30 in the morning i'd get ready i'd drive to Charlottetown. I'd stop in at Tim Hortons, I'd get a coffee, I'd drive to the hospital, and I'd sit out in the parking lot for a bit, listen to the news on the radio, and then when the security guard opened the door, he'd wave to me, I'd go in, and by this time, there was like nine other people that I used to go with that we all became friends. So then they'd all land in, and we'd sit in the, the waiting room, just chitting and chatting and picking on each other, and then they'd open the doors and call us in. Then we'd go in and he'd sit in the chair, he'd get hooked up, hooked up to the machine through that port that was um, surgically put in my chest. And he'd sit there for, for over four hours. And then I'd get off that and then I'd go home. I'd jump in the car and I'd drive back to Morale. I'd get a bite, quick bite to eat and I'd have a little like half hour, 45 minute rest and then I'd go to work and I'd work for four hours as a custodian mopping and sweeping and cleaning desks and so by the time I got home at six o'clock I was I was pretty wore out. They were they were pretty good but like back then oh, I have two kids I have a, a son Stuart and a daughter Ray Ann and Stuart is 15 now and Rayanne is 13 and they were they were kind of I don't know how to put it they were they were kind of scared because of course I had all these bandages and stuff in my in my chest and tubes hanging out of me and but then they they got used to it and they were they were good with it so they helped you quite a bit yeah good uh, good supporting family for sure